everybody. I'm having you all here to see this because I've had my first batch of sauerkraut going in a Hirschkrock the last two weeks. So it's been two weeks from today since I packed about four heads of cabbage, shredded cabbage, a pound of carrots, some salt and cayenne and onion into the crock. And I'm really excited and nervous <laughs> to open it. And I have no idea if it'll be successful or a failure, but we're all going to learn together and go from there. So I haven't, I've just moved it from the floor up onto the table and I'm about to open the lid. And supposedly there's a vacuum seal. In the last day, the, the water that keeps it sealed in the, the rim here has evaporated. And so I'm ready. There was a little bit of a suction. Okay. No scary things jumped out. Let's smell it. It smells good. It smells like onions and pickly. I have to reach my hand in there. Okay, so inside there's two stones, half stone, um, two halves of a circle. They're stone that make a full circle when they're put together and those help weigh down the brine and the, the kraut. So I read stuff after I had gotten everything in here that um, it shouldn't be up too high because you want to leave an inch of air space, but I had a really hard time getting the stones in so I'm a little scared to take them out or see if they're going to come out. But. much fun as this is for you to watch. I think we'll cut out now and then come back when we've got it out. <laughs> okay, we barely got one half of the stone pieces out and it was like kraut labor birth, awful time, a lot of pushing and shoving and <laughs> it gave birth to a stone so <laughs> and now the other one should be a lot easier to get out. I like how I say should and it is. Beautiful. Not sure how much those weigh, but they're pretty heavy and they uh, helped weigh everything down, keep it underneath the brine. And I still used um, some of the outer leaves of the cabbage to cover the, the kraut. I've only made one other batch of sauerkraut, well, two. First one, they're both in ball jars and left in like a, a warm pantry to ferment. In the first batch, turned out really good. I was a little scared to eat it, but I ate both jars, mostly, you know, by myself, and it was good. So and I'm like, yeah, I can do this again, and I'm not sure what happened the second time, but it, it didn't work out so well, and I only ate a few bites and ended up throwing it out. And that's kind of sad, but it's how you, you know, learn, I guess, so. I guess I should taste it. <laughs> There's, I mean, it's really clean on the top, but all the pieces feel clean. They don't feel slimy or um, the smell is really good. My husband, Jeremy, who doesn't like sauerkraut, really, he'll try it. Uh, he thought it smelled really good, so. And salty. It's really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's jealous right now. <laughs> um, I think I use sweet onions, like two of them. It's really, I like the flavor. And uh, I did like, I had this big white container filled with um, the kraut and I sprinkled maybe a teaspoon of cayenne. It's just got a little kick, not a lot. It's like a nice mild oh, wow. flavor. So, 
All right, I don't know if we have enough jars, but we're going to fill up these jars and then keep everything in the fridge. And this is what two weeks tastes like. It's really tasty. It's like a teacup. I decided that I would put, um, instead of going straight into the jars, I'd put it into a this bowl first. Just because I think it'll be hard to get it into the jars without making a mess, and I don't want to lose any. So I'd rather do it over the bowl. So I use a regular V-slicer mandolin to shred the cabbage. I did it all by hand. I have a food processor, but I felt like an arm workout and just kind of really getting into it. And uh, I liked it. It only it probably took me less than an hour to shred and do everything by hand. I ended up filling up this large metal bowl and the plastic bowl that we have the crack in right now. I think if you get a crack that whether it's just resting on your table or, um, you know, in the fermenting process, it's good to have it in something or on a tray. The bottom is um, rough and it did scratch our table, so just something to keep in mind. And while it's fermenting, um, first couple days it went over the edge of the lip leaked out so it never smelled the two weeks I mean it never smelled only if you put your nose up close to it it had a pickly smell but it never was you know like kale chips in the dehydrator that take up the whole room this just didn't even notice notice it Almost 11 pounds of cabbage, organic cabbage. They say to use organic um, because there's no pesticides and other chemicals used. All those chemicals could slow down or hinder the fermentation process. So we were able to pick up some organic cabbage and I used one bag of peeled, uh, shredded organic carrots and one or two onions. I might have to look at the photo, I can't remember. This is a lot of cabbage. Maybe our Oregon friends will get a treat. And what else? I used kosher sea salt. My resources for this, besides my first experience, and some of the books I didn't read till after I had already had the crack going, but our library here had a lot of resources on cultured vegetables. I think one of the better books is Wild Fermentation by Sandor Katz. It's pretty well known in the fermentation world, but um, I just read a lot because I find that I couldn't get exactly what I wanted from any of the sources alone, but Reading it all together kind of helped me piece together a lot of things, and I think most people learn from trial and error, so that's what we're here for. <laughs> okay, this is most of it, and there's not that much brine in the in the little if you want to come in and look at what's left. try to pack it up and store it and see how we'll eat it tonight. Hi! Okay, we have everything in the jars and I just wanted to give you guys kind of like a cost analysis of what we're saving by making our own. Now, Granted, there is the investment in the Cadillac Croc, which I got at a local store. I was very lucky, and it was a little over 100 But one jar like this costs anywhere between 8 and $11 for raw sauerkraut that's not pasteurized. And we have, well, a lot more than that. 
and the cabbage cost eight seventy five, and the carrots a dollar forty nine. I think we had the onions on hand, and I picked up salt and um, cayenne, which we already had in our cabinet. So, for the cost of one jar of raw sauerkraut, we were able to make all of these ourselves from scratch, and the satisfaction and empowerment of doing it ourselves. And I'm just really excited that it tastes so good. So. I hope you guys try it. I'd like to try one that's just in the ball jars to perfect that process so I could share any tips with you guys. Okay guys, just kidding about the goodbye. We're back again. Michelle's busy cleaning up the crock and I went and did the math to figure out how much sauerkraut we actually got out of this. And right here is the original container from Pickled Organics, I think it is. Pickled Planet Organics. Um, it looks a little bit different because it's a curried sauerkraut, but that's the same size as our smaller jar, which is 16 ounces, and that cost around a well spent eight dollars. Um, so we got 16 ounces, 32 ounces, 32 ounces, 48 ounces, and 48 ounces. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven jars of sauerkraut. And that's $88 worth of kraut. Uh, goodbye for real this time. Bye.